Good morning, family. Just want to welcome you on our Palm Sunday. We just are so grateful to have you all here and worship with us today. We just want to thank you so much. As we begin our service, would you bow with me in prayer? Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts, and he looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went into Bethany, sad. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for 
inviting, when we invite you now as, as a time of faith to, to be with us, Father, as we worship you, Father, as we give you praise and adoration. We just want to thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given us, Father. We thank you for this time that we have set aside to just to just honor you, Father. And we thank you so much for your sacrifice, Father, and what all that you've done, and that you felt the need to come uh, from heaven, to come down from glory, to become a lowly man, and to live this earth for 33 years, Father, and to give your life for us, Father. We thank you so much for your sacrifice. We just hope that we honor and praise you in the way that will uh, will bring light and uh, usher in um, to worship and usher in your spirit to be with us, Father. And we just long to be in your presence, and we just thank you so much for all that we do. Uh, honor, uh, we just ask you to be with us within this hour. Bless the people that will be uh, providing uh, uh, avenues of worship. That Bless all that are engaged in our worship today. And we just ask that we just give our very best and our, be attentive to you, Father, in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Morning, family. All right, can we go all stand to our feet? Prepare for worship today. Yeah. 
soul and all that is within me bless his holy name for God is great and worthy to be praised saints come on saints let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise You may be seated while we uh, do our announcements. I think we have some video announcements this morning. Please pay close attention. on Zoom as we continue our study of Romans using Dr. David Jeremiah's Bible study series, Romans, the Gospel of Grace. Please see your Wednesday announcements for the Zoom login link. Kindergarten through fifth grade, please join us for an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 30th at 2 o'clock here at the church. We are also in need of candy and plastic egg donations. Please bring your donations to the church by today. Join us next Sunday, Easter Sunday, as we learn lessons that connect back to the two escapes we celebrate at Easter, Jesus' escape from his tomb and our escape from sin. The program will begin promptly at 9.45 a.m. and join us after for our Easter worship service. Women of Family Fellowship. The sun is out, the birds are chirping, and the walk and talk has returned. Join us Saturday, April 6th at 9 a.m. at the Gehanna Veterans Memorial for a talk from one of our sisters and then for a short walk. Please feel free to invite a friend. Children are welcome and don't forget to bring their wheels. After church, the 6th through 12th graders will go skating at Skate Zone 71. Please see the youth group leaders for more information. Want Don't to forget to check the Wednesday email announcements for additional announcements and sports schedules for our youth. Want to encourage each of you to pay very close attention to the, uh, all the announcements. Just want to uh, um, put a little emphasis one on our youth group at 6 to 12, and it says, see your youth group leaders. You need to see Kelsey Hopkins, Justin Allen, or Justine Allen about the skating today uh, um, immediately after church. But I'm sure they will talk to you about it in your youth groups uh, uh, this morning. Also want to encourage the women to come out to the walk and talk. If you've never participated in the walk and talk, it is an amazing experience. We have a great time. Meet us. This will be the first one, the first Saturday in April. So please meet us there. And want to emphasize that next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And we want to encourage each and every one of you don't be here at 945 because the program will begin at 945. So please be here a few minutes before 945 so that Sister Matiba, Sister Matiba and her cast can begin promptly at 945. Also want to encourage you to uh, attend our Wednesday Bible study, The Word with Friends. Uh, we're having an awesome time studying the book of Romans. It's such an amazing book uh, of just about living the Christian life. And um, I think that is, oh, don't forget, we didn't see the Thursday morning, 6.30 a.m. We have our prayer call. If you haven't joined us yet, it's not too late. That information is in your Wednesday announcements. Okay, everybody feeling great? All right. How about you in, the, in our, on our virtual stream? We hope you're feeling great also. We want to welcome everybody here. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? If we have any visitors, please stand. Great looks like everybody is family. So we're going to stand and uh, we're going to ask you to repeat after me. We are a spiritually connected church with a fierce determination to serve God 
and family. That's why we'll have a positive impact at home, at school, at work, at church, and within our community. And God, you will be glorified. Love on your neighbors for 120 seconds, and we'll be followed with more praise and worship songs by our praise team. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, two and a half, two and a quarter, one. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, family fellowship. <laughs> so excited to be with you this morning. We're going to continue in the praise. Let's all stand. Now for this song. We're going to need everybody's participation, and I mean everybody. So we're going to lift up his name. We're going to give him praise because there's nobody like our God. Amen. So we're going to go ahead. Let's all clap our hands like this. Now this is part going to be a call and respond. So I'm going to need everybody to repeat after me. Here we go. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. And praise when I'm doubting. Praise when surrounded, cause praise is the waters, my enemies drowning. We all say, as, as long, long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. We all say, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, let's sing it. And I, I praise when I don't. I praise because I know you're still in control. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down.
clap your hands like this. All right, now repeat after me. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything that has breath, that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise, I praise cause, cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and So at this time, we're going to prepare for our communion. Apologies, we're going to do offering first. <laughs> we're going to do offering first. So at home, and then even in the building, There are ways you can give. If you're not in the building, you can give PayPal, GiveLify, and Cash App. And this, the, the name is, is Dollar Sign Family Fellowship. Pray with me. Father, we just thank you. We love you. We give you honor at this time. Father, this is a time that we can all participate and give back to your kingdom, Father. So we're thankful that you've given us opportunities of, of means with our jobs, with our uh, resources, Father. So we're asking right now, Father, that we give back to you, give back to what you require us to give back to the kingdom, Father. We're lifting up what is collected this morning, lifting up that it's be collected and it edifies your kingdom here in this little town of Gehenna. We could be mighty at this church, Father. So we're just asking all, already before, giving praise and honor to what is going to be collected in your name. It's in Jesus' name that we are praying. Amen. I praise God, you're sovereign. Praise God, you reign. Praise God, you rose and defeated the grave. I praise God, you're faithful. Praise God, you're true. Praise God, there's nobody greater than you. I praise, praise God, you're sovereign. Praise God, you reign. Praise God, you rose and defeated the grave. I praise God, you're faithful. Praise God, you're true. Praise God, there's nobody greater than you.
now is the time of the service where we take part in the blood and sacrifice in the body of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary, Lord, for our sins. We thank you for your body that was beaten, broken, bruised for us, Lord, for as one sacrifice, Lord. We think about the old days where we had to sacrifice a, a lamb. We had to sacrifice pigeons, all kinds of animals for our sins, Lord. And you just demolished all that, Lord, and just became the sacrifice for us, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As Let us prepare, Lord, as we take this bread represents the body we do this in remembrance of him let us eat likewise this blood represents or this juice represents the blood that was shed as we take this it represents the blood that was that cleanses us it cleanses us from our sins it cleanses us from everything that has plagued us disease everything we don't even realize the power of the blood that <laughs> i mean we don't, we have no idea the power of the blood that just eradicates all disease stomps on demons i mean we don't even know. Let us drink. Crucify, lay behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone. Like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall and bought me sing crucified, crucified, lay behind the stone. rejoice and be glad in it and if it's hard to find joy let us borrow his joy and let us use the joy of the Lord as our strength right now this morning Yeah. 
said that it's good for men to dwell together in unity. And so if you desire God's presence this morning, just together, one time we can sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the air. Your glory, God. To be overcome by your One more time. Let's just welcome him this morning. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place, Lord. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is your glory.
though sometimes coming from crazy weeks, even crazy mornings, we have to. The song says, let our king be lifted up. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, which means that we have to allow it. So God, this morning, beyond circumstances, beyond emotions, beyond our feelings, beyond frustrations and fears, God, we lift you high, God, in this place. God, you said we're two or three are gathered together. There you are, God. So we gather in your name this morning, God. Be lifted higher, higher, be lifted. Give God some praise in the house. Give God praise in the house. If you have tasted the goodness of God in your life, you need to give God praise right now. Open your mouth and let him know and acknowledge him today. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. I know there's a lot going on in your life right now, but God is still sustaining you. Even though things are hard, even though things are difficult, you are still here and you are still breathing. There's still an opportunity for God to get glory in your situation. You just have to keep holding on. Your breakthrough will come through, but it won't come through if you quit the process. Stay in the process with God, and in the process of time, God will deliver. In God's time and in God's way, give God praise in advance for what he's going to do in your life. Give it to him. Glory to God. He did it yesterday, and he'll do it again. <coughs> Glory to God. Thank you to our worship leaders and our musicians for leading us in worship today. 
We thank you so much for your sacrifice and for guiding us and ushering in the spirit into this place. God is good. I want to thank our sister Sadiqa White for standing in the gap on last week and preaching the word. It was a wonderful service, wonderful message. And we have what? The teens. Okay, the teens today. I, I, no children's church, but the teens are dismissed. So you teens, you can be dismissed at this time. Follow your, uh, your youth leaders, and you guys know where you're supposed to go. Praise God for uh, Tyler and Mariah Hopkins celebrating their marriage on Friday night. They got married. It was a wonderful, wonderful. Sixth to eighth grade, join us in the front They're not here today, are they? Ninth to okay, they're not here today. Join us next door. But awesome. So they're not here today, but, but it was a wonderful service, wonderful ceremony. We celebrated, had a great time. So I'm just excited for them. Hopefully we'll see them uh, sometime soon and we'll be able to lay hands on them and uh, love on them. Um, welcome to our visitors for joining our stream here today. We welcome you. We hope and pray your worship experience, even remotely, will be enjoyable and enlightening. And congratulations uh, to our new members. I know I, I want to put this in here now. I didn't say this last week, but Sister Tara Custer, who is the fiance of Derek Kendrick, they are presently having, yes, they are uh, in marriage counseling right now. Uh, they don't have a date set, but Sister Tara uh, reached out to me and said she wants to officially place membership here at Family Fellowship. So Sister Tara, just wave your hand so people know who you are in the back right there. I'm not going to make you come up front. I know she... she I'm going to talk about you a little bit now. Der yeah, I think she's done. Derek was joking with me. Tara said, she said, I'm going to stay in the back. She said, she said I don't want to be up front. She said, I don't want to be that close to Jesus. <laughs> she said, that's a little too close to Jesus for me. So I'm going to sit in the back. And I said, that's all right. Jesus is back there too. But, uh, but welcome, Tara. We welcome you to the family, and we're, we're glad to have you here today. Stand to your feet, church, as we read the text today. And I'm excited as well. We have another baptism that we will be having here today. And she's here, sister, our sister-to-be, Kennedy Sharice Johnson, will be giving her life to Christ in baptism here today. Amen, amen. Just like Makai and Maya did uh, the last two weeks. So we are grateful when young people give their life to the Lord. What an example it is to us as adults to, to, to humble ourselves and to acknowledge that we need God. Amen. amen. So we're looking forward to that. We're going to be in the gospel according to Luke today, Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19 on this day, Palm Sunday, uh, Resurrection Week, they call it Resurrection or, or, or Passion Sunday, it's the, it's the beginning of, uh, of, of this holy week that we look at as we know that a lot is transpiring in this week uh, in the life of Christ as he is completing his ministry and finalizing his, his ministry on this earth, and he's going to be betrayed. He's going to die on Friday, be crucified on Friday. And, of course, we know the story doesn't end as on Sunday. Like, just like a Sunday, like next week, he's resurrected. And I don't want to preach Sunday sermon here today. I'm going to save that for next week. But, but, but praise God that the tomb was empty, and the implications of an empty tomb speaks life to all of us here today. But we'll be in, in Luke Chapter 19, I'm going to be in the King James Version today, the authorized version, as some people used to call it, and we'll start at verse 29 and go down to verse 43 for context. And the word reads, and it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage at Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, go ye into the village over against you. In the which at, you, at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if a man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say to him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they, were, and they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto him, sent up, said unto them, why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, the colt. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. 
And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, At least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee about, compass thee around, and keep thee on in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. I want you to look at verse 44, which we will pull our title for today. He says, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. I want to speak to you from the subject here today, the day of thy visitation. The day of thy visitation. Father God in heaven, we come to you right now, Lord. We are grateful for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you for this preaching moment, this opportunity to present your word. I do not take this moment lightly, Lord. I ask you, Father, to hide me behind your cross. Use me as your mouthpiece today, Lord, and that you would get glory for your name. I pray your word would go out and strike root in fertile soil, that it would produce much fruit in the lives upon which it falls, and that, Lord, that many hearts and minds will be drawn closer to you today as a result of the preached word. Get some glory for your name, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take your seat. Take your seat. Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week. Passion Sunday. Many things happening. This is not a fairy tale. This is not a made-up story. Jesus lived about 33 years in the flesh. This is a historical fact that he died on the cross. Now, yeah, they may they may want to talk about speculation and controversy and 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 uh, about whether the tomb, why the tomb was empty. They try to spread all kinds of things, and there's there's a ton of evidence to support. Uh, that the fact that the tomb was empty and how many people seen Jesus after he was resurrected, but that's the different argument. But, but even atheistic uh, uh, scholars will agree there was a man named Jesus that lived, and he did die on the cross, and he, and he did accomplish a, a lot of the things and was a great teacher. They'll, they'll, they'll acknowledge that. Now, whether they believe he's the son of God is a separate issue, separate question. And to think that God visited us, mankind, in the flesh and walked with us For 33 years, the creator of the universe decided to condescend and put on flesh and walk among us and really truthfully to show us how to do life properly. And it's interesting because right in the in the very if I'm going to walk through the text here today and I hope that uh, the Lord will will bless us today with a good uh, a good word that will be well received that that you can be drawn closer to God. But look at verse 29 of our text, and I'm just going to walk through this here today. He said, and it came to pass when he come nigh to Bethphage at Bethany. He comes back to Bethany. Bethany is the place where he had just raised Lazarus from the dead previously. Matter of fact, it, this story is actually accounted for. The, 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 the riding on a colt uh, into Jerusalem is, is all four Gospels account for this story. But it's interesting that John has a different context. So in John's account of this, in John chapter 12, verse number 1, he says, Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So he said, this is where he is. I'm coming back to Bethany. Bethany is a place that Jesus had frequented often because he loved uh, Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. He used to go over there uh, all the time. But he's revisiting a place, and here's my point. Oftentimes, Jesus will revisit the place where he performed miracles. 
So here he is. He's raised Lazarus from the dead, and he's back here. I mean, y'all remember the story. He came into town, and Lazarus had already been dead for four days. He was in the tomb, uh, buried for four days. And when Jesus said, remove the stone, his sister said, he said, Lord, his body going to be stinking by now. And so Jesus wanted to wait four days to make sure there was no doubt that, yes, he was sure enough dead. And when he raised him back to life. Jesus can raise things back to life that have been dead no matter how long they've been dead. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. No matter how long it's been dead in your life, God can bring it back. Jesus can bring it back to the point that human logic would declare that there's no recovery. God doesn't follow human logic. He can, he can resurrect something when he wants to. Jesus has performed miracles in our lives, and you look back over your life, and you can see where God had brought you from and what God delivered you from. You should have been dead. You should have died. You should have fell in that hole. You should, have, you should not have recovered from that thing. The fatal crash that you missed, the relationship you thought was, was beyond repair, the health crisis that has been remedied and you're still here. Yeah, yeah I know your body hurts a little bit and, you're, and, and, and you may not be a, 100%, but you still ain't where you were. And in spite of your bank account not being as fat as you would like it, God knows my, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind if my bank account got a little fatter, if my debt could get a little bit lower. Sometimes I got to tell my, my adult children that, like when they start having these uh, 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 reactions about debt, I'm like, like, I said, I got debt too. It's, it's called life. Life happens. But so does God. The pain you feel, the hurt, the person who hurt, in spite of whatever is going on, God is saying, I'm still doing things in your life. And God has been showing you and I who he is by the way he has been covering us and delivering us. His power, his favor, his mercy has been keeping us from falling apart and from losing our minds. And you are not where you are because you are strong. You're where you are because God is strong. And sometimes, oftentimes, Jesus will revisit that place <laughs> where he's performed miracles. So I ask you, when Jesus, and I hope my, and his hope when he comes, and I hope y'all getting this metaphor, is that he's performed miracles in your life, and now he's coming to revisit you. And the question is, is that when Jesus revisits us, what's going to be our response to him when he comes through? Because his hope is that we'll acknowledge him for who he is, and not just for what he's done. How do we respond when Jesus, when Jesus chooses to visit us? Do we welcome him? Because, see, Jesus already knows our heart and our mind, so he's, he's not revisiting us to learn where we stand. He's visiting us to observe what we'll do and to give us an opportunity to respond to him. A visit from Jesus will reveal what he means to you. Let me, let me say loud on that one. A visit from Jesus will reveal what he really means to you. It'll reveal where your true priorities in life really stand and where they are. Regardless of the list you made at the beginning of the year, it's going to reveal what the list really is. So we can make a list, but then your actions and your decisions and your choices reveal the true list of where your priorities stand. So he's coming to observe and see what's really important. Where do I really stand? I, listen, I don't perform miracles. Because miracles have a purpose, as we'll talk in a minute. For Jesus, it's an, it's an opportunity for both Jesus and us. For Jesus, it's in that he can experience life with us, fellowship, and, and receive love and honor from us. It's an opportunity for him to get that. From, yeah, he can, I'm coming to see if I, can, if I can connect with you. That's Jesus as he comes to visit. And it's an opportunity for us to be loved by God and to love him back and to love Jesus back, to experience his presence, to be encouraged, to be challenged, and to learn through our interaction with him. Do not underestimate a visit from the Lord. So Jesus comes riding on this coat in, the next, in verse number 30 right, of our text in Luke, Luke 19. He says, saying, he tells them to go into the town to get this coat. And, and, and they, they obey, they bring it back, uh, and, and, and now he says, okay, well, he says, they, they, they said to the Lord, okay, he has need of it. Now, to ask the question, why a coat? Uh, why a coat, right? Why, and it's a, maybe it's a, it's a, 
It's a fowl of a donkey, is what they say. And, 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 and the, it, it didn't come, you know, when, you, when you're riding on a, on a stallion or a steed, you know, that's, that's, that's what they rode when they was going to war, and you had royalty. But no, Jesus came in humility and said, no, he's coming in, uh, on, a, on, a, on a fowl of a donkey. Humble. Is that, and, and also he's doing this to fulfill prophecy for Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, was prophesied that this would be so. And so Jesus was fulfilling prophecy in Zechariah 9 and 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Fulfilling prophecy, hoping, hoping perhaps maybe they might connect the dots. Amen? So when Jesus comes, it is an opportunity when he visits. But here's what, I'm going to, here's what we're going to jump into right now. If you look at verse 35 of our text, here's another point. When Jesus visits you, honor him with what you have. Amen. You know, it's interesting. We want stuff from him, but there's opportunities to honor him. At that, that are, we, are we taking advantage of the opportunities to honor him? Worship is an opportunity to honor God. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. If you base whether you're going to give God, come to church and worship and, and sing and pray and praise all based on how you feel, whether you feel like it, well, that says a lot about just how important honoring God is. It'll expose you. Right? Look at verse 35. He says, and, he, and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And he went, and they spread their clothes in the way, in, on the road in front, as, the, as, they, as he walked on the donkey. A few, and I love, the, I love this distinction, <laughs> because a few disciples, listen, a few of the disciples that actually got the coat put their stuff on top of the coat. So Jesus sat on, on, their, on theirs. Other folk just started laying their garments in front of the road. And I love that because it's, it's, this might be a, a I, might be, I might be stretching this, but it's, it's something when there's some folk that have a privilege of doing some really, really close personal things with Christ. That's a, that's a privilege. When you're so close to Christ that I, I, I'm putting my garments, you, Lord, you can sit on my stuff. I, I will give, I, I'm taking something that I find comfort in, something that's important to me, something that I, I have my own cloak, my own clothes. I will be inconvenienced for you, Lord, if, it, if I can honor you. Matter of fact, no, no, I'm not going to lay mine on the ground. You can take mine and put it on, I'm going to put it on the coat to make, the, make it softer for you. What are you willing to do to honor God? To honor Jesus, to let him know that you truly appreciate him as king. And I I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to take stuff that is important to me, and I'm willing to use it, Lord, to bring you glory and to bring you honor. Amen. When Jesus visits, make sure you take a posture of humility and, and treat him like the king that he is. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to Jesus when we are willing to honor him with what we have. And listen, he ain't asking you to give what you ain't got. Take your clothes. He said, just, they took their cloaks off. They didn't go say, hold on, Jesus, let me run to the bank and let me empty out my money. Hold on, Jesus, let me go find that. What, what, whatever you got on you, whatever you got at, at, at your disposal right now, honor God with it, and he will honor it. He will, he will receive it with a smile. When Jesus visits, make sure we are looking for the opportunity to give him, to give him honor. Amen. Given of our time and our resources, our talents and abilities, and yes, even our finances. Amen. They honor him as you would a king, giving honor to God and his son for who he is, not just for what he has done. John records in his gospel that some other people, listen, uh, had cut branches from palm trees. So John, I think, and, and Mark both re referenced the fact that they cut, they cut palm uh, branches from, these, from, from palm trees and laid it on the ground in front of him, along, as well as some people that did their, their garments. But the palm, and the palm trees represented victory. They represented a, a victory. And I love this, Sister Sadiqa, in Revelation, because you know, you, I know you'd be dig digging in. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, it references palm, uh, palm branches 
as a sign of, of victory where it says this, after this I looked, John, John is on the Isle of Patmos, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and, and to the Lamb. It was a representation of victory that we have been, we, are, we have our king who is coming with salvation. And so it was, again, another sign of honoring and proclamation of who he is and what he's come to do. Amen. And continuing in the text, here's another point that needs to happen when you get a visit from Jesus. And this is what they were responding with. Jesus, in verse 37, when Jesus visits, we should praise him. When he was come nigh, even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, verse 37, the whole multitude and the disciple, of the disciples began to rejoice and praise him with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had, they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now, Mark's, uh, Matthew and Mark's account, they actually say the people cried Hosanna, just like the song we were singing. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And the word Hosanna was a plea for salvation and an exclamation of adoration towards God. Hosanna, just shouting Hosanna, Hosanna to God because they knew that he was coming and it was a plea, save us, Lord, save us, Lord, because they knew that he could. And they were adoring him because they knew that he was coming to provide salvation. So they praised him. Now listen to this. I want to I us to lose this now. They praised him, as it said in, the, in that verse, for the miracles that they had seen. Watch this, though. But their praise truly stemmed from who he was. Amen. Look at the verse. I'm going to show you right, right there in verse 37. Watch what, I, watch what I'm telling you. It's important to make this distinction. In verse 37, when they was come nigh, even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. Before they rejoiced, they were disciples. Before they praised, they were, he, he's saying they were, all, they were followers of Christ. They were learners of Christ. They were imitators of Christ. They sat at his feet and learned and, and, and followed him. And, and so now when they see the, the, all these miracles happening, it just reinforces their decision to follow their, their rabbi and their master. When you're a disciple, you're a, you're a lifelong, committed follower of Jesus Christ. And when God reveals himself, shows his power, visits us, he, 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 he shows us his works, it causes us to praise and rejoice because of what we've seen. Why? And why is this distinction important? Because we acknowledge him for who he is, and when he does what only he can do, it reinforces and strengthens our faith and conviction in what we know about him. Only God can do what, what, only Jesus can do what he does. So if I, if I believe in him and then now he does the works that, re, that reflects who he is, it just reinforces my faith. So it still starts with uh, 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 my, my understanding of who he is. And this is extremely important in today's day, even in, in, our, in our churches today, dare I say, because there's, there's a lot of people in this world, and dare I say, in our churches who will praise God and Jesus for what he does more than who he is. Amen. We, will, we will jump up and down when he gives us what we ask for. We will shout as, as loud as we can, and tears running down our eyes, as we bask in his blessings that he provided when we were praying in the midnight hour and he delivered. But if I tell you, just shout because he's the son of God. He's the creator of the universe. He's already secured your eternal place in heaven. You silent. Because we got a what have you done for me lately type of attitude when we praise God because we're making it contingent on whether he has answered my prayer and my ask of him. And so we praise him more when he gives us what we want more than just praising him for who he is. And we got to get this, we got to get that, that switched around because he is who he is all the time. And if you only wait till he delivers you uh, with something you feel like you need, then you ain't, that, that means your praise is sometimes. But his covering ain't sometimes. His forgiveness ain't sometimes. His deliverance ain't sometimes. We want his, we want his blessings all the time. We, 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 we don't ever want him to stop. 
The least we can do is honor him for who he is. And it's funny because in John's, in, in John's account in that same chapter, uh, as, he, as, he, as he continues to talk about the things that Jesus had done and Jesus did some teaching, and then it, it says in verse 37, it, 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 see, see, miracles are not just for entertainment. It, 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 even after, watch this, verse 37, he says here, John says, even after Jesus performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. That verse tells you a very, a very important point. Miracles aren't for your entertainment. They're supposed to be signs that cause us to believe in who he is. So when you experience God move in your life, it ought to be reinforcing or at least convicting you of who he is, not just dazzling you that something, oh my gosh, something amazing just happened. Because everybody will talk about something amazing. There, were, there are people in the text who don't believe in the multitude who came out. Matter of fact, it said when he got to Bethany, it said that all the people who, had, who saw him raise Lazarus, they started telling everybody, hey, hey, that dude's here, he in town. And everybody said, oh, where he at? And they're coming out. So the whole town is out. Not because of who he is, but because of. And those same people, after they came out, they still don't believe. Because he said, he, he, he did even more than that. I, I raised Lazarus, and then I did some more stuff in your presence. And y'all still don't believe who I am. So you're entertained, but you're not convicted. You like what you saw. And you're telling everybody about it, but you're not following me. You're not honoring me. They believed the miracles to be true, but they didn't believe him to be who he was. This was a problem with many during Jesus' ministry. After Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two, two, two fish from a little boy's lunchbox, it said in John chapter 6, verse 26, Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. You follow me because you want some more miracle food. You want me to keep on dazzling you and keep on delivering. You're not here because I, you know the signs mean that I am who I say I am. And in John's account in our text in verse 17 and 18, right there in chapter 12, he said, Now the crowd that was with him called Lazarus from the tomb. They were there, and many people uh, uh, heard those signs performed. And so in verse 19, he says, So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This was a problem. The Pharisees could never, they, they, you know, it's interesting that the Pharisees could never refute the miracles but it never led them to believe who Jesus was. Herod, it said that in Luke 23 and 8, Herod was glad to see Jesus. He was, it said he was glad uh, to see Jesus for a long time. He had wanted to see him because he had heard about him and was hoping to see some miracle performed by him. I'm not here to, I'm not here to bow down to Jesus. I just heard he did some cool stuff. I want to see I want to see a show, too. But what good are miracles if they don't confirm the truth of who God is and who Jesus Christ is as the Son of God? What good is it for God to keep on blowing your mind with blessings and miracles and deliverance in your life and it never lead you to understand and accept who he is and that he is the God who loves you and Jesus who has saved you and Jesus who wants to be with you and be your friend and deliver you? What good is any of it if it doesn't lead us to a conviction of, of following and, and honoring our God? It's a... It's almost a waste of energy from heaven. God, God I, done, I done poured out all this, all this divine power, and you still ain't turning to me. But we're dazzled. We want to see the next one. Lord, show me another one. Lord, show me another one. Lord, show me another one. The Pharisees struggled with this all the time, and they had to acknowledge that those miracles were good, but they could not get past the fact that he was who he was. They would even say, no man can do these things unless... Unless he's, uh, unless he's from God. And they were like, yeah, that's true. But, and then they still wouldn't believe that he was from God. Getting back to our text, verse 19, watch this. When he says, so some of the Pharisees from among the multitude, they was like, <laughs> they, they're crying out and they're praising. And they said, rebuke your disciples. You need, hey, 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 hold up, hold up. They, they talking about you king and they praising you. and all. Whoa, 
Jesus, you need to check your disciples. They're stepping out of line. You can't be talking like that. You can't be pra- Don't be praising him like that. Amen. Why? Because they don't believe he is who he is. But those who know who he is are not going to be held back from giving God praise. Amen. The Pharisees had a problem when people started praising God for who he was. Yeah. Praise him for who he is and call him Jesus the Christ. Sometimes I think even as believers, we're, try- we're even careful with how we invoke the name because we're trying to be universally accepted. So don't say Jesus, say God, so this way that the Muslims won't be mad because they believe in God and we believe in God, so we can all say the same thing. Or don't say, uh, uh, don't say uh, uh, Holy Spirit or, or we, 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 try to, we try to make it nice. Don't say he's the only way. Don't say that there's no other way. So don't, quote, so don't quote John 14. Take that one off your list. That he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except they come by Jesus. Don't say that. Don't say that. Because folk are going to be upset if you tell them that, that their way isn't the way. Or if they conclude through deductive reasoning from your statement that there's only one way, and the way they've chosen isn't this way. So, you know, it's simple math. But be willing to call him who he is. God the Son, the Word become flesh, the glory of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. God the Son who was in the beginning. God the Son who created all that is, who sustains all that is. God the Son who died to reconcile the world to God. God the Son who rose from the grave on the third day just like he said he would. And God the Son who sits on the right hand of God after he was resurrected. You have to make sure, call him who he is. Let the world know that it's not just about what he's done, it's about who he is. I'm, 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 I'm coming down the stretch now. Verse, watch this, verse 40, verse 40, watch this. <laughs> they said, check your disciples, and so Jesus had to say, okay, listen. He answered and said, I, I, I tell you, if, I, if these hold their peace, if I tell these folk to keep quiet, the stones, the stones going to cry out. And he said, the stones going to immediately cry out. The moment somebody ain't giving me praise, I'm going to get it from somewhere. I will make inanimate objects that don't even have a mouth or or lungs. I will force them to give me praise. They will cry out. I call this point right here. Jesus put the stones on standby. We supposed to praise God, and Jesus said, okay, I got stones on standby if y'all not willing to praise me. I got, some, I got some inanimate objects on standby. If you're not going to give me praise, they're going to give me praise. Don't let, some, don't let some stones do your job. He said, they said, check your disciples. He said, no. He said, if I check them, the stones will cry out. So he calls out and they say, no, won't, don't let nobody muzzle your praise about who Jesus is, especially in this culture of compromise and everybody trying to be, uh, 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 it's relative truth. There is no absolute truth at all. Jesus said, I'm going to be praised and acknowledged for who I am, even if you muzzle these voices. In verse 42 of our text, and I'm I'm just trying to bring it on down, he said, yet at the same time, many um, even among the leaders believed in him. Watch this. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith. For fear, they would put out, be put out of the synagogue. Verse 43, and why were they afraid? For they loved human praise more than praise from God. Isn't this our country today? Afraid to publicly, unapologetically say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one and only Savior. I'll believe privately, but I won't do it publicly. I'll say that I believe in in my my private prayer chambers, but I I don't want people to know because I'm afraid. Or let me say this way. I like the fact that we all get along, and I like the fact that they think well of me. And if I start saying this, it's going to offend them, and they're going to think different of me.
when Jesus visits, there's going to be mixed responses from people. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is that when he's, when, you know, when it says in the praise, in the verses above, it says that the multitude of disciples with a loud voice praised. And I thought to myself, it was a multitude of disciples that were praising, but the, the multitude of disciples was also embedded in a crowd of unbelievers too. So it was a mixed bag. Yeah. And, it thought, and I thought to myself, wow, these disciples are willing in the midst of unbelievers to praise with a loud voice. To, to not ashamed to, I'm, yeah, I know I'm among people that don't believe, but I'm going to acknowledge and, and the, the fact that I am with Jesus, that I believe in who he is, and I'm not going to be swayed because somebody else is uncomfortable about what I believe. And I said to myself, my God, we need more people like that in God's kingdom today to be willing to just stay where you stand and stand where you stand. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be arrogant, but you stand boldly where you stand because you know who Jesus is. Amen. That's it. When Jesus visits, there's going to be a mixed response. Some will be there for the show, and some will not believe no matter what evidence is presented. Some will believe privately and yet be ashamed publicly, but some will shout. Some will believe openly. And walk boldly. So as I get ready to extend this invitation, and I believe this is one of those messages that I believe that, that hits all of us. And literally, it's a cliche, but this is a come to Jesus moment. Amen. Jesus is visiting you right now. question is, is what's going to be your response? I can tell you what I believe Jesus is hoping for your response to be that you would want to honor him, want to depend on him, praise him, acknowledge him, that you want to be a better woman, a better man, a better son, a better daughter, a better brother, a better sister, a better friend, that you are a sinner, that you need his forgiving power, that you need to change your priorities, that you need to allow him to, to love on you and to forgive you and to save you. That he would, he, that's what he's hoping for. Yes, thank you. I know that because in these next few verses that I'm going to read, just for the invitation, just so this really hammers home for you, it says in verse 41, when Jesus had come near, he beheld the city, Jerusalem, and he wept over it. There's only two places in the Bible that says that Jesus wept. He wept when he, when he arrived and found out that his friend Lazarus had died. And he wept there. And then right here, he approaches Jerusalem, God's chosen city, the chosen people that should have known to look for him. And he came there, and I knew that he was expecting them to be looking for him. See, when Jesus visits, he's, he's showing up wondering are you, do you have the posture and disposition that you were actually looking for me, that you were anticipating me? Because Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, he who seeks shall what? Find. He who seeks shall find. If you're looking for him, he will be found. He takes pleasure in being found. He wants to be found. He wants you to find him. So when he shows up, he says, and when he was come near, he beheld us and he wept over it. And he said, saying, if thou hadst known, even you, at least in this your day, yeah. the things which belong to your peace. Yeah. Like, if, if you would have just, like, do you understand what, I came to give you something special that you know you need, but you weren't looking for me. You didn't recognize my visitation. This was the day. This is the day. I'm visiting you right now, and you ain't recognizing that I'm here for you. And he hammers it home a little further. And he says, for the days shall come. And you know what he says? He says, but now they're hid from your eyes because you're just so hard-hearted you can't see it. Verse 43, for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee about and keep thee on every side. Now, now uh, scholars say that he's prophesying of the destruction of Jerusalem for, the, for Rome had uh, besieged it. 
And if you understand what a siege is, a siege, siege is when you, in, when you surround the town, you cut them off from all of their resources and all of their, and you just wait it out. You let them starve, and, 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 and they start killing each other, doing all kinds of stuff, and you just let them all kill each other off. Cut them off from all their resources so they can't survive, and it's a slow death. And he said, you're going to be besieged. And this, 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 I, I, I've, I preached this before, and I, I didn't really pick up on this point. The fact that Jesus said, the days are coming when this is going to happen, this bad thing is going to happen. And he, and he says, if you would have known, if you would have accepted, if you would have honored, if you would have prayed, if you would have just known that this was your day. This wouldn't happen. What tragedies, what calamities, what, <laughs> let me get deep, what issues down your, gene, your, 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 your lineage are being affected because you didn't do what you should have did this day? What grandchildren don't know Jesus? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I'm going into the future right now. I just jumped into my time machine and I just fast forwarded 20, 30 years into the future. And now I'm looking at your grandkids and your, and your, and your, uh, your, your, your children to be for you younger folk. And I'm looking at them and they don't know Jesus. Could it be because on the day Jesus visited you, you did not? And this would have been avoided if you just would have recognized the day that Jesus came to visit you. Stand to your feet. We should look forward to him coming. We should look forward to him coming. Anticipate it. Don't trivialize any time that God comes together, God comes to visit. He's not just going to come when you're praying in your closet. Yeah, he does. But anytime, he can come in any form, in any way to visit you in your spirit, in your mind, and move and touch you. Do not walk away. Don't disregard it. Won't you do it? We're going to get ready to sing, but before we sing this verse, I'm going to ask Kennedy to come on up. We're going to take her confession to have her go back and get ready for the baptism, and then we're going to, we're going to extend the altar call. And, I, and I'm, listen, I know there's some folk in here that need Jesus. And this is Kennedy. Can I get the mic, please? This is Kennedy Sharice Johnson. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. amen. And uh, on last week, I'm going to turn the mic. On last week, please turn this mic on, please. Thank you. On last week, um, I spoke to her father, and uh, after her obviously witnessing Maya uh, and Makai being uh, baptized and giving their life to Christ, and this is listen, and this is how it happens. I don't believe the day of Pentecost when it said that all, more than 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ. I don't think all 3,000 took one step forward and got baptized. I bet you it was. Somebody got baptized, my brother got baptized, and I said, man, I was thinking about it, and then I started talking to my brother, and then I said, you know what, I'm going to do it too, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you see God move in somebody else's life, and it confirms the decision that you need to make, that's what it is, and I always ask the, the kids, you know, what, in their own words, like, why do you, you want to give your life to Christ, especially for young folks? Tell, give me in your own words. You didn't got to quote scripture. Just tell me in your own words, and she said, I just want to get closer to God. And I think she said, so, oh, she said something that I remember, and I don't, think she, I don't even think she understands, Dad, how profound it was. She said, she said, I've ex she said something, I'm, I might mess it up. She said something to the effect that she said, I know God loves me, and I want to I love him. Amen. Something like that. Like, I know he loves me, and I, this is my way of loving him by giving my life. Oh, my gosh. I said, yeah, I don't even know if she knew what she said. And, um, and so, Kennedy, I'm, I'm excited for you. I know your parents are proud of you and excited for you. So I'm just going to ask you a question. And if you believe it to be true, you answer it. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son? Yes. Amen, amen. This death brought, yes, this, this confession brought death unto Jesus, but it will bring everlasting life unto you.
Now that you have made your confession of faith, we're going to baptize you in water according to the scriptures. Be added to the local body of Christ. This is just the beginning. Amen. This, is the first, this will be the first day of the rest of your life with the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. So, Mom, if you want to take her to the back and get her ready. And, sis, glory to God. I asked my, if my deacons could come up. Our prayer warriors come up. Now, listen, I know there's somebody else in this house that needs God. Whether you need prayer, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, or if you want to get baptized, the water is ready. We got, we got the clothes ready. You've heard enough. You don't need to know everything in order to give your life to Christ. And you also don't need to be perfect. Matter of fact, that's the, that's the deception. You think that you've got to clean yourself up in order to get right with God. You don't do the cleaning. Jesus does the cleaning. You come filthy and you let him work on you. Plant yourself in the Lord and grow. Today is the day of salvation. Do not delay. Let God have his way in your life. Glory to God. Is there one? Hallelujah. Honor him. Give him praise. With every breath that I am able, Come on. oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. We need him, church. We need him. Oh, my life. Come on. We need him. Oh, my life. We need him. You have been Today's the day. Faithful. Today's the day. So, so good. Hallelujah. With, With every breath that I am able, well, I, I will, will sing of the goodness of God. God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh. of our lives. Thank you, Your God. Goodness is running Thank you, God. After. It's running Thank you, God. After me. Give glory to God. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Lord, every day of my life, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Hallelujah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after Hallelujah. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. You know, in, um, in John's account, in uh, chapter 12 of John, he said that after they had shouted Hosanna and that they had fulfilled this prophecy with Jesus coming, in verse 16, he said that at first his disciples did not understand all of what was happening. They didn't understand this. And it said only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that, that these things had been written about him and that these things had to be done. And I said to myself, Lord, you are so amazing. Every time God visits you, every time God in engages with you, it has, it has lasting impacts in your life. Like they didn't even understand what was happening until later. This is why even when God visits us and touches us, sometimes the revelation of, his, of, of the truth that is in him will continue to unfold in your life. And the depths of it may come later. You may, 
a year from now, you're going to feel God's love in a deeper way than you feel it right now. Because the Holy Spirit is going to reveal the depth of it. It'll just keep unfolding in the revelation of how God is moving in your life. He said they didn't understand it till after he was glorified, after he was resurrected. My God. So I'm telling you, hold on. Walk with Jesus and learn from him. And know that even in the visits that you don't understand the details yet, keep walking with him. And he'll start to reveal it more and more as you keep living your life. Glory to God. Nothing gets wasted with Jesus. Glory to God. And I got news for you. You're going to need that. You're going to need that. You know why? This is Holy Week. These same folk that shouting Hosanna are going to be running from Jesus when he's, when he's crucified. Because this Bible says that Jesus was by himself. All the disciples left him. So when the dark days come, you're going to need your Hosanna. You're going to need your shout. You're going to need the miracles to remind you who he is so you can come back. Because it's going to get hard. There's going to be challenges in life. There's going to be times that you get low and feel low. But God says, I'm still there. And even though you might get weary, even though your faith might get weak, God is saying, I'm still there. And you know what I love about Jesus? He's there with open arms. Even after we fell flat on our face, he says, I don't care what you did. I just want you back. I don't care how bad you fell. I just want you back. What kind of a loving God does that? That while we were still sinners saves us. That while we were his enemies makes us his friend. That's what God does because he'd rather be close and love us than to get even. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that verse one more time for somebody. Come on. In all my life you have been so, so. Amen, amen. Give God some praise in the house. Amen. So we have a prayer request card uh, for Jesse Holmes, who has been homesick with a virus. So we want to pray for Jesse. There's been something going around. It's been going, it went through my house as well. Uh, with, and, with, and for those of you who got allergies, I know it's allergy season kicking in. So you got the allergies, you got the virus, you got all kinds of stuff going around. So let's pray for Jesse right now. Father God, I ask you to cover our brother Jesse Holmes. Lord, heal his body. Lord, I pray he can get through this virus. And as we know, these viruses have to take their course, keep his body strong, keep his mind strong, be with Evie as she ministers to him, and allow him to be restored to his reasonable portion of health. Uh, Lord, that he can continue to be there for his family and for his grandchildren. Uh, And Lord, we're just asking for healing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is able. Amen. 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 Uh, We're getting ready to... Uh, should be coming out here in just a moment. So I I'm, I'm just want to thank you all for being present and, uh, and just never, ever underestimate 
God visiting you at any time. Always anticipate and look for him. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. We had a wonderful uh, 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 meeting with our men last Monday, and I want to encourage all men. At some point, we're gonna, we'll get a, uh, an announcement up there on the board consistently, but we've been meeting, and we've been having some really good gatherings. Our last gathering, we had about 11 men there, and there was still, that's still not everyone, but it's, it's, all, it's informal, but it's very impactful, I believe. Uh, we've had some great discussion, and we just really, as I've said before, we just really kind of go around. I call it more like a check-in. We're just checking in with each other celebrating one another. There were some men that had some promotions and on the job, praise God. Uh, some folk that are uh, working through their businesses that are, and we were praying over some businesses. And uh, just, it was just a wonderful time for us to get together and just talk about the blessings that God has for each of us. And also for us to not compare ourselves to other people. That was one of the biggest topics, that, that God has blessings for you and they're for you. They're not, you ain't got to compare your blessing to somebody else's blessing that God gave you what's yours, and you need to be excited about what he gave you. Uh, uh, and so we talked about that as well. So just there for one another. So we do that every first and third Monday, right? So the first Monday is a Zoom call. We just kind of connect about an hour, depending on how many people are on there. We pray. We have some scripture. We, what, we go through our de daily devotionals, just talk about what devotionals stood out to us. And then on the third Monday, we try to come together just to kind of, uh, I think we met at Panera Bread this last time, and we may do that again. So uh, just, just I encourage all men, come on out and be a part of that. So at this time, if you would stand, uh, family and friends, y'all can come up here. If you want to take some pictures or a video of Kennedy being baptized, you can do that now. This is an exciting time now, y'all. Take me to the water. Take her to the water, take her to the water, to be baptized. And I'll say this, Mike, I'll say this for all of us, I remember the time when we, when I did this, and a lot of us have done this, uh, Every time we do this, it, it reminds us of the, 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 the commitment we made at whatever age we are. So, so Kennedy, this is uh, the decision that you're making, as I told you back there, the best decision you will ever make. You'll come through a lot of decisions in your lifetime. But by far, this is the, the best one you'll make. God is smiling upon you. Amen. And know that uh, you have a family here that whenever you need something, uh, prayer, whatever you need, we'll, we'll be here for you. So. Because of the confession of your faith, Kennedy, I will now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for the remission of your sins. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. You know that Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. And I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. You know that I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. And I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me and I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. As we dismiss for our day and for our week, let us continue to honor God this week and be in a remembrance of this holy week as we, as we have this last final days as we consider what Jesus is going through. He still has to go to the garden. He still has to be arrested. He still has to
be crucified and scourged first and then crucified, mocked, and then carry his own cross. He's got to do all that in the next few days, y'all. Can you imagine the weight that he's feeling right now? I want you to think about that this week. As I always say, Sunday is so good because Friday was so bad. And we cannot trivialize Friday because the, the, the worst Friday, what well, Friday was so bad, and so that's how it made Sunday so magnificent because that tomb was empty, even though they beat him down the way that they did. Amen? Amen. And so, let's, so it's a rejoicing time, but don't, don't stop squirming and, 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 and squirming in your seat as you consider what he endured, because that's part of the process as well. Amen? Amen? Amen. Father God in heaven, we come to you right now. We thank you for this opportunity and this day that we had to, give, to lift you up in song and prayer and to present your word. Father, we are rejoicing with heaven today because a soul has given their life to you. We are grateful, Father, that Kennedy has made the ultimate decision to confess faith in you, Father. And we are grateful. We pray, Lord, that we will wrap our arms around her and around the family and support her and to just bless her and her family as they continue to walk together in the Lord. Father, be with us as we leave this place. Be with every family, every person that has heard the word. I pray, Lord, that the word will be a seed planted in their life and that it will produce fruit as they leave this place. Lord, we are grateful and we pray, Lord, that you continue to watch over each and every one until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.